Good morning, Grace Point Fellowship. Well, I was a little louder than I was expecting. <laughs> Welcome. I am so excited that you're here this morning. My name is Nathan. I'm an associate pastor here at Grace Point, and we're going to kick our service off. We have awesome things coming up in our community. Uh, we have some fantastic things going on this morning, and so I get to share some of that with you. If this is your very first time here at Grace Point, you chose a good Sunday because every Sunday at Grace Point is a good Sunday. Uh, it really is. We love it here, and uh, I love this church personally, and I hope that you feel welcomed here and that I'm not the first one to actually welcome you to our church. So if you are new, there's a little bulletin right there on your chairs. If you would fill out the little tear-off visitor slip, we do read those, and we would love to reach out and connect with you if you are willing. Uh, we would love to talk to you about Grace Point and help you connect in any way, especially if you're new to the community. Uh, we want to get you connected to a church, whether it's here or another local church. We want to get you into a church. So that's our heart and our goal for you this morning and to enjoy worshiping Jesus with us. And for those who have been here for a long time or just a month or two, you know that we take your prayer requests every Sunday and we pray over them. Please write them in the, uh, the tear-off slip as well. We collect those during our worship service. Brother Gary will pray for them out loud. If you do not want him to pray for it out loud, but just would like to share your request with the staff, please put silent prayer. And Gary will, will read it. We'll pray for it during the week, but we won't pray for it out loud during the service. So those are kind of the basic things we cover usually every Sunday morning. But we do have some awesome events coming up, specifically tonight for our guys. The Wild Game Dinner is finally here, um, so it's maybe not too late. I know people will come on last minute, so come back to the uh, welcome desk after the service or talk to Gary or myself or Julian. He's back there. We would love to have you and your guests tonight. Uh, we'll be breaking down these chairs over here and eating lots of really good meat. That is tonight, so don't miss that at 6 p.m. Uh, next thing we got going on, um, we've got our bingo ladies night. Uh, it's kind of a sweeter event. You know, we already we do the meet, you're doing the sweet. All right, that's going to be coming up Tuesday, October 19th. So that's this Tuesday at 6.30 right here at Grace Point. Please sign up for that as well at the welcome desk. Also, coming up this week, we have another ladies event. We've got our uh, Zumba class. Uh, that is happening every Friday. Uh, there's ladies coming, enjoying themselves, having a blast. I personally know, I've had some ladies tell me I want to come. I haven't been able to make it yet. They're still going, so please come. It's really fun. I'm not currently doing it because it's a ladies thing, all right? But I know it's fun, and Casey's awesome. So if you're kind of on the fence, please come check it out. It's a really enjoyable time. Also, coming up, the Fall Festival. Please collect that candy, all right? We need candy. If you buy the bags and just come drop a bag off in the back, uh, this is a ministry we do for our community uh, to celebrate Thanksgiving to our Lord, all right? You also see right there in your bulletin, uh, there's a sign-up for that. We need lots of volunteers, and it's one of the funnest events to volunteer for. You get a free pass to dress up, which is also kind of fun, all right? So please do that. And I think the last thing we have for you here is our uh, Compassion International. No, it's not Compassion International. It's a Christian um, Samaritan's Purse. Sorry, I've got those two mixed up. We are actively sending boxes to help spread the gospel all over the world. The missions team has actually decided this year we're paying the shipping for every box. So usually you have to grab a box, fill it, and then pay shipping, which is like nine or nine or nine dollars or something like that. The missions team said we want to send so many boxes, we want to make money not as big of an option. We're going to pay the shipping. So if you want to go grab a box, make sure you follow the instructions. It is a huge blessing. This church usually spends and sends out lots of boxes. Please look in your bulletin for that. So I believe that is all the things I'm supposed to announce. Please, your bulletin has many more things, ways to connect. Brother Gary's going to come on up and introduce some special guests. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. I turned it off instead of on. Wonderful to see you, dear folks. We are thankful for you being here. We are uh, excited about the opportunity to serve, and I want to just add this. The reason that we have Fall Festival is because we want to reclaim a day that Satan has taken from so many people. He uses it for evil. We want to use it for good. Amen? So if uh, the Satan can use candy to try to lure kids to the wrong side, let's just use candy to tell them about the sweet and wonderful word of Christ Jesus. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good amen that's why we do that so uh and adults if you're going to dress up i'm just going to tell you uh you dress up like a bible character would you please we want you to be uh prepared to uh to show them 
the good things of the world and of the Lord, not of the other side. So I do have the opportunity before uh, I introduce our guest, Miss. I, I now, Hannah, go just go ahead and stand up. If you haven't met Hannah Seguri, let me just introduce her to you. And Hannah's coming this morning. Now, as of right now, she's she's having to work on Sundays, and we're we're going to keep working on that. But she's been wanting to join the church, and her she's here every Sunday morning, and she's she's here on other nights. And uh, I just wanted to introduce her to you because. She's come this morning to join Grace Point Fellowship Baptist Church. And I know you've probably seen her around for a while. Well, we finally got her on board, and uh, she would like to join the church. So I'm going to ask you, since we, she won't be able to be here afterwards, what's your pleasure concerning her request? Having known Jesus as her Lord and Savior, having followed in scriptural baptism. That's a yes before I even got that out. So, church family. As she comes this morning, will you open up your circle of kinship and friendship for her? Will you, will you love and care for her as best you can with God's help? And I ask you as well, will you open up your circle of kinship for us? And you have done that, but will you also serve as best you can these as your church family? Then it is my privilege, dear friends, to uh, pronounce us family before the Lord. So we're thankful for that. You're going to have a chance another time to come meet her and say hello, but uh, I am thankful. Uh, and let's do this. All, would you stand with me? And I'm gonna, I've got a, a, a little bit here we're going to do, but we are thankful for those that God brings. Amen? And we ask you, church family, as you've made this commitment, follow through. Join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful for a chance to serve and to worship. Would you bless us today as we turn our hearts to you? We pray, Father, that even as we look into further opportunity to serve by protecting life, would you bless those coming this morning? And we ask that as even as they share, that our hearts would be encouraged and inspired to continue to stand up for life the life that you've created. We ask, Lord, that as we worship, that your Holy Spirit fill our hearts and that we have a fullness that comes only from your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, lead, guide, and uplift. And all God's people said, amen. Would you be seated? And I do indeed want to introduce a couple of folks as they come right now. Ashley Leonards and Bailey Sunbeck are here with the Texas Right to Life. And they're going to share with you more because, as we said from the beginning of this month, each Sunday through October, we're emphasizing ways that we can be a part of saving and inspiring others to save every life possible. And all God's people agreed by saying, Amen. Thank you so much for letting us come here today. Um, as Gary just said, my name is Ashley Leonards, and this is Bailey Sunbeck. I'm a legislative associate, and she's a development associate for Texas Right to Life. And we would like to talk to you all today a little bit about the Texas Heartbeat Act. You've probably heard about it on the media, and so we want to give you a few details about that. As Christians, we believe in the sanctity of human life, and so you can be able to have um, good conversations about this. And then we also want to give you all some ways that you can get involved with this. Um, but first, I would just like to introduce Texas Right to Life. So we are the oldest and largest pro-life organization in Texas. And as I said, we believe in the sanctity of all human life from conception until natural death. And the way that we act on that conviction is through education, um, educating the public like yourself, educating high schoolers and college students. Um, we also work with patient advocacy. And then we work with electing strong pro-life individuals into office, and as well as helping to draft and create the strongest pro-life bills possible and seeing those through on implementation. So that's a little bit about who we are and I'm gonna to go to the next slide. Um, so every other year, the Texas legislature meets for about 140 days for those of you who are not familiar. This is different than a lot of other states and it's great because we like small government. I don't know if y'all are a fan of that, but it's good. Amen. Um, but they will uh, file somewhere between 3,000 to 5,000 bills a session. So it's a lot of bills being filed a lot of oxygen being taken up in the room by other issues than the pro-life issue. And every session we know there's only going to be one or two pro-life laws passed. This is just what happens historically. And so what we want to ensure is those one or two pro-life bills that are passed are going to be as strong as possible. 
And so at Texas Right to Life, if it has our seal of approval, it's going to be a good bill. It's going to be a strong bill. It's going to be an effective bill. And so this is our criteria that you can see. So we want to make sure that one, it promotes a positive cultural conversation. Two, that it directly saves lives. And three, that it's legally prudent. So we want to make sure that all this is happening. If it's not actually going to be legally prudent and be able to withstand legal challenges, it's great to say that we want to save lives. It's great to say that we want to do this, but it's not actually going to be effective. If it's not going to promote a positive cultural conversation, it's not going to change what's happening around us, or it's going to hurt the movement in some way, we don't want to promote that as well. And so we want to make sure that whatever we support has all three of these criteria. And on the next slide, you'll see, this is a list of what we supported this past session. These were our priorities. We had six priorities, five were bills, and one was a budget item. This past session um, from January to May that went on, um, it was a great session for the unborn children, and it was a devastating session for vulnerable patients. And if you want to learn more about that, come to the back table we have, and we have this handout as well. But I want to go over our wins right now. So we had two wins for unborn, unborn children. They were great victories, and that was fully funding the Texas Alternatives to Abortion program. And this funds, uh, it reimburses adoption agencies, maternity homes, and pregnancy resource centers. And these resource centers and groups can apply and if they qualify, um, they can be reimbursed. They have to go through audits to make sure. So whenever someone says, you're pro-life, you're just pro-birth, we're not pro-life, just pro-birth. We're pro-woman, we're pro-choice, we're pro-option, we're pro-support. And so we fully funded this with $100 million for the biennium, and that is a huge victory. This is the largest it's ever been. All the other alternatives to abortion programs in every other state does not equal what Texas does for women and their children. That is a huge victory, yes. Thank you. We also, this is perfect because we also passed the strongest pro-life law to ever go into effect since Roe v. Wade. And this is perfect because there are more women and children. There will be more women having babies. There will be more people needing support. And so we have that support for them. And so that's what we're gonna go over is the Texas Heartbeat Act. And so on this next slide, you'll see. Um, so why did we choose the Texas Heartbeat Act? Well, as I said just a minute ago, we wanna make sure whatever we're supporting is legally prudent um, it provides that cultural conversation and it saves lives. So the Texas Heartbeat Act, what's the conversation around that? Whenever you hear it, you'll hear the media probably not say Heartbeat Act, and that's what it's called. They'll call it Senate Bill 8. Um, they'll say there are is cardiac activity or maybe um, electrical impulses because they have to try and avoid the personhood that it brings about. Whenever you hear heartbeat, mm -hmm. you think life, you think human. If I were to fall on the stage right now, someone would run up and check for my pulse would probably be the first thing you do. Um, so we want to protect the babies even before their heartbeat is detected, and that is the end goal. But this provides a great cultural conversation where we have to acknowledge the humanity of this baby as early as five to seven weeks gestation. It also, um, is it legally prudent? It's been able to withstand 16 lawsuits so far, and it is still in effect. So it is legally prudent, and it does save lives. It's estimated 100 babies' lives a day are being saved since this wow. law went to effect. Amen. So it is a great victory for Texas. Thank you. And this is with the help of people like you. Um, so what exactly does the Texas Heartbeat Act do? So on the next slide, you'll see a little review of it. And this is just so y'all can have more information. So there's a lot going on in the media that they're saying what it does, but what the Texas Heartbeat Act does, they'll also call it a six week abortion ban. It doesn't have to do with the weeks, it has to do with that baby's heartbeat being detected. And so it is the strongest law to go into effect since Roe v. Wade, five to seven week ban. Whenever that heartbeat is detected, that abortion is illegal. It only relies on civil enforcement. So other heartbeat uh, laws that have been passed by other states have relied on other means of enforcement. And this has allowed them to be enjoined and not go into effect. And we wanna make sure that we are saving babies. And so we only relied on civil enforcement and no government official and no one that has assaulted the woman are able to bring these lawsuits to make sure that it is brought into effect. So no one that assaults the woman and that results in this pregnancy has any standing under this law as well. And on the next slide, you'll see a little bit of how it works. Um, so an abortionist, which is despicable, but before they are able to perform an abortion, they have to check um, the day of that abortion procedure before they commit that abortion and see if that heartbeat is there. And if that heartbeat is there, that baby's life is protected. And if they go ahead and commit that abortion, they can, fe they can face these civil lawsuits. And only those who aid in the abortion, abet in the abortion, and commit the abortion are liable, not the woman herself, because for 50 years, our nation has lied to women, they've abandoned women, they've told them that they need to do this, and so we need a time of grace. As a church, we understand we need this grace, and even those who have committed abortions, they can have grace with God, but they're also financially profiting off the killing of unborn children, so we go after them financially under this law. 
And so only those who aid, abet, and commit, but not the woman herself, are liable under this law. And there's also a four-year statute of limitations. So this is great for y'all to know. If you hear of someone that has had an abortion and their baby's heartbeat was detected after this law has gone into effect, if she regrets that within four years, she could bring a lawsuit against the abortionist or anyone that aided in that abortion. So that is to ensure her protection and to ensure the um, abortion industry is complying and it has caused them to comply because they're motivated out of financial gain and we are disincentivizing them from that financial gain, which is what they really are here for. They're not here mm -hmm. to help women. We That's wanna right. help women, we wanna support women, but we don't wanna support these choices. Um, so on the next slide, you'll see a little bit about the civil enforcement. Why do we choose this? Um, well, this is important because the district attorneys, several of them in Texas and several district judges said that they would not enforce pro-life laws. And so we chose to let the public enforce this. It was also a measure used. We have a thing called Sanctuary City for the Unborn Ordinance in Texas. This has allowed, I believe, 37 cities in Texas to so far become sanctuaries, um, only using civil enforcement, meaning abortion is illegal completely within those cities right now. And so using what has worked in other parts of law and what has not worked in other times, whenever states have tried to pass heartbeat acts, we were able to come up with this means of enforcement. And then on the next slide, you'll see that this is working. It is saving lives. As I said earlier, it's estimated between 4,500-ish babies so far have been saved under this law. Wow. And so it is a huge victory for Texas. Amen. And it is Amen. still in effect. It's great. Thank you. So the last slide I just want to say, just how can you be involved? So this is now, you know a lot of information about it. Um, if you have more questions, we have some handouts. Um, but how can you be involved? Of course, we're all Christians, so we need people to pray. Um, pray for these women that are in these crisis pregnancies. Pray for their babies. Pray for the abortion industry to have a change of heart and conviction. Um, pray for those of us who are fighting um, to implement this law and wisdom as we have conversations with the public about it. Um, pray for those around you to have courage to speak. Pray for those who have had these abortions. Um, also, support pregnancy resource centers. I just got a name of one in the area, Pregnancy Assistance Center North. There are about 350 pregnancy resource centers, adoption agencies, and maternity homes in Texas. So there are plenty of places to support, volunteer, donate diapers, uh, any sort of baby material. They usually pass those out for free, so they need volunteers, all these things. Another thing you can do is just support a woman you know. Whenever you have a friend, a granddaughter, someone facing a crisis pregnancy, support her, love her. Um, if you have a friend or you yourself have gone through an abortion, another thing, that is great about pregnancy resource centers is they often have free post-abortion counseling. If you're a father, if you have a friend that is suffering from years of having this trauma that you carry, you don't have to carry that anymore and you can have free counseling if you contact pregnancy resource center and I'd be happy to help you find one near you. Um, the last thing is you can speak up and show grace to those who have had these abortions. And also um, I'm gonna turn it over to Bailey, but we love and just thank you so much for your time this morning. And she's gonna talk to you a little bit more about Texas Right to Life, but thank you so much for your time and your focus. Hello, as she said, um, I'm Bailey and I work in the development department at Texas Right to Life. Um, Ashley's over in Austin with the rest of our legislative team, but um, the headquarters of Texas Right to Life is actually here in Houston in the Bel Air area. Um, so I would just love to exchange contact information with any of you at the end of the service. We have a table in the back, um, but yes, we're, we are local and we would love to exchange um, contact information to keep you all in the loop and um, yeah, so we can just stay informed and know truth because it's, it's important. Um, yep, that's all, that's all we have. Thank you so much um, for your time. And um, there's some different uh, social media and, and our contact information up there if you want it. Amen. Thank you. As our praise team comes up, I want to remind you that PACN, Pregnancy Assistance Center North, was here last week. And uh, they shared with you how you can help. There are still some bottles on the back. If you were not here last week, there are baby bottles in the back as a reminder to give. You put it on your table, you put it on your counter, and we're going to fill those up, not just with your change, but put some folding money in there, would you? Uh, because this is a very real way that you can help support those mothers who make the decision to protect life. Amen? You can do that. If you did not get one, please get one this week, won't you? Please do that. And as we get started, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, some of our newest folks in the church because, you see, Mitch Peltonen has his family with him today. So Andy and Katie, y'all stand up. All three of you stand up. 
I want to introduce if you if you haven't had a chance to meet them yet. We got we got Mitch. Y'all know y'all know that fella. And then we've got his beautiful wife Andy and their gorgeous daughter Miss Katie. And so wonderful to have y'all with us. We're glad you're finally here. Yay! <laughs> Now we just get them to join the church now that they're all here, right? So, all right. <laughs> to who? Oh, okay, I'll get with you on that one later. <laughs> all right. Anyway, God bless you. Glad to have you with us. Would you stand with me? We've already prayed as we began the, church, the service. But would you join with, with me in dedicating your heart to worship? Did you know that this is the day that the Lord has made and His Word didn't say, I'm going to sit around and ignore what's going on around me. He said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Everybody's going to sing but me. This is the day that the Lord has made. Everybody else can pray, but I'm not. This is the day that the Lord has made. People are going to worship around me. But I'm just going to sit here like a bump on a pickle. Is that what God's Word says? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Dear friends, you've got the opportunity to give something back to God. Worship of your heart. Are you ready? This means yes. This means no. Are you ready? Let's worship together. Take a deep breath. Let's sing to the Lord. Who breaks? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Amen. Who shakes the whole earth in holy thunder and leaves his presence? In awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. Thank you, Lord. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life That I might be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Who brings our chaos Back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter the king of glory the king of glory who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings if you're thankful sing it out this is amazing grace this is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me ah, for all these things and many more things he's worthy of our praise amen so don't pass by this moment think of him he's alive and he's listening and he's worthy Sing it out. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Amen, church. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Sing it out. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. This is a new song we sang it last week. It's a commitment to the Lord. Put it up there for my brother. Your love, oh Lord, is strength to my soul. Hope for tomorrow that won't let go. Your presence is the joy of my life. To you I lift my eyes. So we'll serve him. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will sing of your love forevermore. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Your word alone. Your word alone. A lamp to my feet. A light to my path as you're leading me. Your ways, O oh Lord, are higher than mine. To you I lift my eyes. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will sing of your love forevermore. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord, serve the Lord. Open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room. Open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room, Jesus, yeah. Open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room, Jesus, yeah. Open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room, Jesus, yeah. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will sing of your love forevermore. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. As for me, make this commitment. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Sing of your love forevermore. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, serve the Lord. Open up every door, write it on every wall, sing it in every room. Worthy 
of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Sing holy, holy There is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me Sing us out. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build. be seated church and in the same heart that when we put our trust in the Lord we are not shaken when we turn our eyes upon him all else just seems to fade away amen church let's sing this out turn your eyes turn your eyes upon Jesus look for his wonder Thank you. 
at the altar for prayer. Heavenly Father, even as we begin to turn our hearts to you in prayer, we ask for help to pray. So many times, Lord, we let our prayers be all about us. And we know, Lord, that even in prayer, it should be about you. So we ask, Father, as we pray, would you strengthen your Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our minds, in our prayer. Lead our thoughts and our prayers, Father, that we would seek your heart. So, Lord, our first prayer is God, our prayers. We lift up these needs of our church family, Lord, and ask for your grace, for your strength, for your help, for your healing. Lord, we lift up Ron Posey, who is a quadriplegic, who's in the hospital with blood clots, heart problems. We pray, Father, for grace and strength and help for Ron and for his mother who is his caretaker. And we ask God for your grace and strength for her. Lord, we lift up our sister Mary, Lord, whose leg continues to need healing. And Lord, would you help her to 
continue to have direction and help to, to save her leg. Father, we pray with Jose and Anna for their twins. Lord, as they continue to be in the NICU, we ask, God, that you would strengthen those little ones. Bless them with your help as they grow healthy and stronger. Father, we pray for Jeff Beck, who was diagnosed with COVID a second time. Father, he only has one lung, and we, we pray, Lord, that you would take care of, of him. Would you help him with the kidney problems that he faces? We pray for Elise, who just moved here, Lord, to teach in Tom Ball, and we pray, God, that you would help her to seek your heart. And, Father, that you would draw her close to you. Father, we lift up this prayer that you would bring peace and comfort to their family, that your will would be accomplished in their life. Father, for this prayer that your will would be accomplished in their marriage, that you would lead and guide them, Father, to know what to do to seek your heart and family restoration. Father, we agree with this prayer, Lord, that men would stand up with a true heart of worship. God, I can't help but think that real men sing real loud <laughs> that they love you and that they're unashamed to worship and to praise your name. Father, we uh, are so grateful for answered prayer. And Lord, we lift up each silent request that's been made today. Lord, would you meet those needs? And again, we just say thank you, Father, that you are always there speaking to our hearts and listening. We thank you, Lord, and we rejoice in you. Thank you for giving us your love. Amen. Thank you, God, for giving us your grace and your guidance for giving us your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we might not just hear, but be able to actually grow in spiritual wisdom. Help us to follow you always, Lord Jesus. It is in Christ Jesus' name that we pray, asking you to bless the time of service in now your word. Touch our hearts. Help us to respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bible, I hope you do. If not, I know many of you will pull out your phone and turn with me to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. And as you find Galatians chapter 5, we're going to be reading verses 16 through 18. Would you stand in honor of reading God's Word, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now, folks, we started this last week, and we're going to finish up on five ways that you can walk closer to the Lord and walk in His Spirit. We've been reminded that as we look at the Word, that the Spirit and the flesh war against each other. You ever experienced that? Anybody not experienced that even today? Every one of us, even as we get up, our mind says, you know, uh, I think I'm just going to do what I want instead of what God wants. I remind us that every decision that we make, every step we take, is driven by something. It's either driven by the hunger of the flesh or it's driven by the Spirit of God. No matter what it is, 
It's driven by one of the two. Our prayer should be, God, help every decision, every step I make to be driven and led by His Holy Spirit. And in agreement, all God's people said, that should be our prayer. Would you pray with me? Father, would you bless the reading of your word to our hearts? And Father, we pray that our hearts then would be receptive to receive your word and to apply it to our walk, our daily walk. We need this, God, because without your Holy Spirit, we miss the nutrition of the word. So we pray for your help in applying every word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you be seated? We realize that every day that we awake, we talked about the sign of life is a heartbeat. <laughs> I like that. You know, the heart, if the heart is pumping, if the lungs are breathing, if the brain is working, you're alive, folks. So you understand this, that every day that we awaken is determined and what we do with that day is determined by one of two forces. We said either the flesh or the spirit. And we, you as a Christian, are not meant to let your flesh rule. We talked about that. You're meant to walk in the Spirit of God. You're meant to let God's Holy Spirit lead every step you take. That's where victory reigns. Amen? That's where you get the strength to have victory in Jesus Christ is not by doing what you want to do, but by doing what God helps you to do. That's where righteousness rules instead of flesh. You can. Listen, you're going, Pastor, you're talking about the impossible. No, I'm not. I'm talking about how you, with God's help, can walk in the Spirit 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 52 weeks a year, every week, day, month of your life. God wants you to be able to operate in victory. Amen? He wants you to. Isn't that nice to know that God's not up there going, they're going to step out of line any minute. I got a lightning bolt ready. There he goes. Boom. Why is it so many of us think that's what God waits to do? Listen, he wants you to walk in victory and he's cheering you on to say, listen to the spirit. Listen to the spirit of God. Last week, we started on that five steps to help us to learn how to begin to enjoy a spirit-led walk with God. The first thing we talked about last week, and if you've got your bulletin, those are filled in. First of all, step number one is to walk in the spirit by throwing off the hindrances. Remember, we said we need to throw off the things that are not of God. Hebrews 12, 1 says, lay aside every weight and the sin that ensnares us. Throw it off. We're to get rid of them and to throw them off as quickly as possible. Remember, we talked about fire ants. If you've ever gotten in a fire ant bed and those fire ants just come up your legs and they start stinging you, we don't pick them off one by one real slow and patient. We throw them off. That's the way we're supposed to throw off sin. Secondly, number two is that we walk in the Spirit by sowing in the Spirit. In other words, you've got to plant the spiritual things in your life. A man, a woman, a child, anyone, but a person's harvest in life depends on totally on what they are sowing. Galatians 6 tells us that. Let me ask you, are you giving God your time? Are you sowing to the Holy Spirit of Christ? Are you putting yourself in a position to hear from God? If you're not putting yourself in a position to hear from God, you are missing out much because God wants to show you His great and mighty things. So we move to the third thing today. You are to present your body as a living sacrifice. If you want to walk in the Holy Spirit of God, you have got to want to and to present your body as a gift back to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, I beg you, I'm calling on you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, folks, hey, that's the least we can do is to give our life back to Christ who saves us in salvation from our, our sin. And then it says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 
Now, that's just easy as pie, right? That's what I thought. It's a tough one. Listen, that's hard. That is a most difficult thing. That sounds like a big commitment to make a living sacrifice of our life. And it is. It is a very big thing. But isn't that exactly what Jesus Christ did for us? He lived for 33 years as a living sacrifice. Never sinned. Never moved against God. Always did the right thing. Something that we cannot do. But as a living sacrifice, He gave Himself for those 33 years, living and doing God's will. And then at the end of that time, when the time was right, he gave himself as a sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God, to die for my sin, to die for your sin. Now listen, he could not have done that. He could not have been the sacrificial lamb of God had he not lived a perfect life up to that time a living sacrifice. He had to be the pure sacrifice. Friends, that's what Christ is calling us to do, not to the best of our ability, but to the best of His ability, to ask Him to help us with the walk and the talk and the thoughts. Now, what does that really mean for us? How in the world do we present our body as a living sacrifice to God? It starts with a heart attitude and a mind adjustment to say, we can't do it on our own. We need God's help. God's help to do what? First of all, we, as we said, to lay aside the things of the world. We've got to want to. That means that we're willing to give up activities, friends, or habits that don't match up with God's perfect will for our life. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to lay aside those things that hinder us, those hindrances, those sins? What it means is walking away from anything that's not pleasing to God. Anybody want to say, well, that's easy? It's not, is it? We are to be walking in a sacrificial manner to give up those things that get in the way. The second thing is, is that we obey righteousness not the flesh. We lay aside the things of the world and we put on righteousness. Not the flesh, not the things of the world. Now the reason that people get so good at sin, and listen, you can get good at sin. You can get really good at disobeying the Word of God. But one reason that people get so good at sin is because they practice it so much. Do you want to be better at putting off sin? Then, friends, you've got to practice it. You've always heard that little uh, ditty that says, perfect practice makes perfect. Well, listen, or practice makes perfect. Listen, if you, if you start practicing to get rid of these things, you're going to get even more help from God because you're going to be hearing from the Lord. A person doesn't become an alcoholic the very first time they ever take a drink. It doesn't happen that way. They had to practice it. They had to practice the drinking until their flesh was trained to demand it. Folks, that's the way our bodies are. You have got to train the flesh to come under control of the Holy Spirit with the eyes, with the ears, with the feet, with the hands. To become good at obeying the Holy Spirit, to become good at obeying the the law of God, you've got to practice it. Problem is, we don't always want to. That's why we need God's help to obey righteousness and not the flesh. The third thing is, we've got to make a daily decision to put the Spirit on. Every day. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell on me, and I'm, I'm just going to ask for a little support here, okay? I am 62 years old, and I found that about the time I was turning 50, I started having this crazy, weird thing happen to my body. I could eat less and still gain weight. Any, I, I mean, you don't have to raise a hand, but I mean, any sympathizers out there? 
empathizers. So I went on a diet. And I've been on a diet ever since. Sometimes I don't do what's best for my body. Sometimes I don't do what is best for my health. But I'm going to tell you this. It's hard. I have to make a decision. And every day, even when I have done really well for days and weeks and maybe a month or two, every day when I get up, I make the decision. Am I going to eat this or that? Absolutely. Somebody knows me. (laughs) Friends, it's so simple with the body, we get it, right? You get it. Are you with me? This means yes. I know that you understand this, and you're not going to give me this one today. Not on this one. Listen, it is a decision that has to be made from my mind and my heart to say, this is what I'm going to do, or it's not what I'm going to do. And it's made every day. Why do we not think that the spiritual appetites have to be controlled in the same way? They do. Dear friends, we have to make a daily decision to put on the Spirit of God the same way that you put on a coat. (laughs) I heard about a man who prayed Romans chapter 12 and Hebrews chapter 12 every morning. Now, I'm going to give you a hint of what that is. But his prayer went something like this. You already know Romans 12, 1 and 2. We read that just a a minute ago. But Hebrews 12 talks about throwing off the, the bad things, throwing off the hindrances. You remember that from last week. But his prayer went something like this. I kind of followed as best I could. But Father, maybe this should be our prayer. No, not maybe. It should be. Father, I present my body to you as a living and holy sacrifice. Is that not a great way to start your morning? Friends, we need to do this. And then we need to add to that, Lord, I know that that's just my reasonable service. It's the smallest thing that I can do for you. That's a part of my divine worship for you. So, Lord, right now, I submit my body to your Holy Spirit. Father, I lay aside the handicaps of sin that wrap me up and cause me to stumble so that I then, Father, if I can throw those off, I can run the race that you have set before me. I will look unto you, Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2. I will look unto you, Jesus, the one who started my faith and the one who will complete it for me. In Jesus' name, I'm taking command of my body. Body, I'm talking to you, body. The one that still wants more gummy bears. Gotta, I'm talking to you, body. Mind, you can't tell me what to do or think today. Spirit man, the one of God, you're in charge today. Body and mind, you submit to the Spirit. And all God's people said... Listen, folks, that's a great prayer. That's how we should start every day. Because as we continue to present ourselves to the Lord, we draw closer to Him. Now, it may take some time to straighten everything out. It always does. It always does. But if you're willing to be obedient, if you're willing to say, heart, mind, body, I'm submitting to Christ, then it doesn't take long. We begin to follow closer and closer to the Lord. Listen, it would be backward for us to think that we're going to get everything right in our life and then start walking with God. I've had people say this to me. Pastor, as soon as I get my life right, I'm going to come back to church. Pastor, as soon as I get my life right, I'm going to start worshiping again. Listen, it doesn't happen that way. We've got to come to Christ. We've got to come to Him and let Him work in us because we don't do it without His help. We don't do it well at all without His help. As we obey the Holy Spirit's leadership, then other things will start working out in our life. Have you noticed that? Don't think that you're going to wait and get right with God on your own. You better come to God and let the Holy Spirit help you get there because you're not going to do it by yourself. 
That's step three. The next step is this. We walk in the Spirit by praying in the Spirit every day. Uh, let me read to you again the Scripture that we read. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 18, the Scripture said this. It said, but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. If you're led by the Spirit. Folks, if we're going to be led by the Spirit, each step needs to be led by the Spirit. But if your step is going to be led by the Spirit, your prayers need to be led by the Spirit. When you pray, how do you start? How do you start your prayer? God, that boss of mine. God, that kid of mine. God, that husband of mine. God, that wife of mine. God, all these problems. God, the bills. God, this. God, that. Instead of, Holy Spirit, take my heart and guide my prayer. Listen to Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Holy Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. I thank you, Lord, because I've got a lot of weaknesses. I need that help, Lord. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Have you ever gone to God in prayer and you didn't even know really what to say? You didn't know where to start? You were so overwhelmed by everything? Listen, that's what this is talking about. Not praying in the things that you want to talk about, but stopping and praying in the things that God wants you to talk about. Friends, the most powerful way for you to walk in the Holy Spirit is to pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray and ask God for strength. I wonder how many Christians go through their entire life in Christ, but they never ask the Holy Spirit to teach them to pray. Praying in the Spirit, praying in God's strength, Praying following God's leadership is the gateway to living life above what you're living. Higher than you've ever known. That's why the disciples asked Jesus. They said, Jesus, Luke chapter 11. They said, Jesus, Lord, Master, teach us to pray. Do you remember that? And do you remember what Jesus taught them immediately after that? He taught them the Lord's Prayer. He taught them the prayer that, that we know of as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven. You ever prayed that prayer? Or you just recite it? Do you actually pray that prayer? It's a great prayer. But folks, it's not supposed to be a rote prayer that you just get through and right before the ball game begins or right after the ball game ends and all the guys throw their hands in and out of breath, Our oh, Father which art in heaven. That's not what, the way God said to pray it, unless you truly mean it. Listen, that prayer is supposed to guide us to a season, to a subject that we need to pray about. You are to ask God to show you how to pray and what to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, start off by giving God glory. Folks, those seasons of prayer are important to us. It's not just supposed to be a rote prayer, but it's just a good rule to follow as we pray. And here's a good rule for you. Are you ready for this? You want a really good rule on how to pray well? Start by being still and listening. Psalms 46.10 and all of Psalms 46 reminds us how we need to be praying. Be still and let the Holy Spirit of God lead your prayer after all dear friends who's the master I, and I, this is not one of those uh, rhetorical questions I, I'd really like to get an answer here who do we consider our master God who do we consider as our Lord who do we consider as the one who's supposed to lead our day it should be God should it not it should be our Lord Jesus Christ, should it not? So here's a question for you. If God is the master, that makes us the servant. If we're the servant, 
and he's the master, shouldn't the servant get his or her orders from the master? Have you ever gone to work not knowing what to do? Instead of checking in, just started doing anything? Listen, you need to check with the boss. What do you want done? What is it that's going to help the most? There's no reason to sweep that floor if you're just fixing to pour stuff out on it. There's no reason to build something on this lot if you're going to be clearing it off. Folks, we need to stop and we need to let God tell us what to do. The servant should always check in with the master before doing anything. And that's how we ought to pray. Praying as the Holy Spirit leads us to accomplishes so much, so much more than if we just start on our own. Several things, six things that checking in with God and praying in the Holy Spirit will do for you. First of all, it charges and strengthens your spirit. Because when you pray in Christ, the Holy Spirit will fill you up. You want to get gassed up? You want to be filled with energy? You want to have the Holy Spirit running in your heart and life? Check in with Him and say, I'm yours. Watch and see what happens. It charges you up. Secondly, it enables you to overcome the weakness of the flesh. When the Holy Spirit has charge, He helps you to say no to the flesh and yes to the Spirit. Talk about those bad habits falling off. Man, you're brushing them off quick when you got the Holy Spirit's help. Third, it makes it easier to receive from God. Listen, I like to put it this way. How many of y'all have those little thermos mugs? You know, uh, some, some of y'all seem like this, but and it's got that lid on it, you know? Yeah, all, everybody does. Do you know that in order to fill that thing up, it's a whole lot easier if you take the lid off? You ever try to fill that thing up with the straw in it and the, and the lid on? It's just not going to work, is it? Well, listen, you're the same way. When you stop and you pray to God and you say, God, I'm listening. God, I want to hear from you. Lord, my heart is ready. You're confessed up. You're, you're, you've prayed about the things. You're ready to receive from God. Listen, you know what you've done? You've taken the lid off so that God can fill you up. Take the lid off. It makes it easier to receive from God and... It helps you to keep what you've already received. The fourth thing, it strengthens your ability to resist the devil. Now, how many of you don't need that kind of help? Right. All of us need help from God's Holy Spirit to resist the devil. We need his strength. We need his help. Five is this. It causes your inner man, your spiritual man, to rise up in adversity. I got tested on that this morning. I was on my way here, and somebody was driving so slow, it was, it was, it was hampering. And I wanted to get here. So when I got to the place where it actually had the dotted line, I did it legally. And I wasn't following too close. But when it came time for me to pass, there was nobody on the road. And I pulled over, and he sped up. Well, you know me. In the spirit, I went, mm -hmm. had to be, right? And then he drifted over to try to cut me off. I passed, both, both physically and spiritually. But I'm going to tell you, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to go. When you walk with the Spirit, when you spend time praying in the Spirit, when you spend time listening to God's Word and listening to the Holy Spirit of God, it helps your inner spiritual man come out in the tough times. Are you with me? 
Because I'm going to tell you, it's easy for the physical man to come out in the tough times. And all God's people said, thank you. It's tough. It's hard for the spiritual man to rise up in adversity. But it can and it will when you are spending time with God, when you're listening to His Holy Spirit. And six, it reveals things to your spirit that you could never know in your own ability. God wants to show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Jeremiah 33, 3, love that verse. Matter of fact, if you've ever heard that, you know what that's affectionately called? Jeremiah 33, 3, God's phone number. I like that. Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Folks, when you pray in the Spirit, when you seek the Holy Spirit, when you pray seeking God's will in your life, it reveals things to you, to your spirit, that you would never know unless you stopped and let God speak to you. So if you want to go higher with God, if you want to grow spiritually with God, you need to yield to the Holy Spirit of God in prayer every day and through the day. When you do that, you're going to begin to see the power of God in your life. If you don't do that, you won't. And you will drift further and further and further away from God. Even though you've got all this knowledge in your head, it'll puff you up to make you think, oh, I'm a good Christian. When you're not walking with God at all. You've got the head knowledge, but you don't have the heart obedience. I'm reminded of a scene in a number of movies I've seen over the years where all of a sudden the person in, in, in a war zone they're in the war, they're, they're outfitted to fight the enemy and all of a sudden they stop right in the middle of a field because they see something and they realize they're standing in the middle of a minefield they move left or right front or back, they could step on a, on a mine and, and blow themselves up but this guy has a radio and he radios, and he says, hey, I'm in a minefield. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. So the operator on the other side says, just a minute, let me patch you through to the headquarters. They know what's going on. So they get on the line, and they call him back and say, hey, good news. That's our minefield. He doesn't feel any better. And he says, well, what's that? He said, what are they, how's that supposed to help? There's still mines all around. They said, we have a map. We know where every mine is. We know where all the trouble is. We can walk you out of there. And they say, look, here's how you've got to do it. You've got to go two steps this way, three steps that way, this way, that way, or I'll walk you through it. And so he goes, well, that's great, but never mind. I'll just get out myself. Boom. How ridiculous that would be. Do you agree? How ridiculous that would be. Listen, when we come to God and we ask God, Lord, show me your way. Show me your will. Show me what you want me to do. He says, I want you to walk two steps this way, three steps that way, two steps this way, three steps that way. And he can guide you step by step. And instead we say, nope, believe I'll do it on my own. Boom. How is it we can see the uselessness of doing it our own way physically? And yet we still struggle to listen to the Holy Spirit of God. Number five is walk in the Spirit, obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit. When he says two steps, two steps this way, one step this way, back up. Listen, it, it may not make sense to you, but when the Holy Spirit tells you, do this, friends, you know what you're better off doing? <laughs> Whatever he told you to do. Here's something that's really cool. Did you know that the Holy Spirit is always speaking to you? 
It's just whether or not you are having ears to hear. Will you listen to him? You see, there is an answer to every problem you're facing today, whether it's financial or health or family-related. The answer to the worst problem in your marriage, the answer to your worst problem in your health or your life or your finances or your job or even in your church, the answer is only one word from the Lord away. Will you ask him? And will you hear it? How can you access these answers? By listening to the Lord. Be still. Listen. Heed the voice of the Holy Spirit. Be obedient when He tells you to do something and He prompts your heart. Don't wait. Have you ever had that prompting from the Holy Spirit? You didn't do it and then you regretted it? Sure you have. Here's the question. How far do you want to go in your walk with God? If you just want to keep it surface level, you just keep on keeping on what you're doing. But if you want to go with God, you've got to change some things. How often do you hear people say, you know, I'd go to Africa if God would call me. If God called me and God asked me to go to Africa, I'd go to Africa or China. But they won't obey him in the small things. Maybe they would go to China. Maybe they would go to Africa if God called them to do so. Maybe they would. But they won't obey him in the daily little things of life. They won't forgive someone who's trespassed against them. They won't stop watching ungodly TV or reading ungodly books. They won't spend time with God every day. They won't yield to his Holy Spirit. Listen, isn't that exactly what happened to Peter? You remember Peter? Remember Peter? Size 14 shoe, size 17 mouth. Peter told Jesus Christ, well, I'll never deny you. I would die for you. Do you know what happened just before this? Jesus had called them to the garden. Jesus told just a few of the disciples, he said, come with me. And they stepped away from the others. And he said, pray with me. Stay here and pray with me. Pray for me. Pray, pray, pray. Jesus went a little bit further away, and you know what Peter did? He fell asleep. Jesus came back. And he said, couldn't you pray with me for an hour? He said, pray. Pray to God. Pray for me. And he stepped back out. And you know what Peter did? Jesus came back. I'm sure he probably shook his head and he said, Get up. They're upon us. Let me ask you a question. Stop and think about this. Have you ever wondered if Peter would have done better if Peter might not have denied Christ had he actually spent that time in prayer with the Holy Spirit? If he had actually stayed with Jesus in prayer, if he had sought the help of God instead of succumbing to the fleshly desire to sleep. I wonder, wouldn't things be different if we prayed? and spent that time with the Lord if we didn't sleep through prayer and perhaps we wouldn't deny Him in so many ways. I'm going to remind you of this. Everything God tells you to do is important. And if He says you need to stop here and pray for an hour, dear friends, I'm going to tell you there's a reason for that. Amen? When God says do something, there's a reason for that. So what we need to do is tune in to the Holy Spirit of God in everything. Maybe it really doesn't matter which road you take to work one day or which road you take to get to your kid's house or, or the store. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit prompts you and says, 
and you feel it. You feel it in you. And he says, you don't, you know, go a different way or turn around and go home. And then we find out when we were obedient to that that there was a big accident there. Listen, there are times I believe with all my heart, I believe that God protects us when we will listen to him. We need to tune in to what the Holy Spirit tells us to do, even when he's telling us something small or something you don't want to hear. Maybe he says, don't do something. <laughs> we should confess the statement that's found in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 5, and we need to confess this every day. I hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and a stranger's voice I will not follow. Satan, unfortunately, can get so close he's not a stranger anymore. When you obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit, you're going to be in the right place at the right time for God to use you, doing the right thing with the right people, and you will actually have a spiritual victory in everything that you do if you're following God's lead. When you take these five steps that we've talked about today, when you take these five steps in walking in the Spirit, there's not going to be any limit to what God can do in your life. The world has yet to see what one man totally sold out to Jesus Christ can do. Our problem is that we're sold out to the flesh. So we need to stop letting the flesh control us and live a spirit led life of peace and joy. I, I didn't say it was going to be easy. God's Word says take your own share of suffering. didn't say it was going to be easy. I did say it will be filled with peace and joy and spiritual success. Blessing beyond anything that you've ever hoped for or imagined. You will live when you do that the God kind of life by seeking the Holy Spirit and His direction on this earth. Would you pray with me? Father, without your help, we try to walk out of the minefield alone. So we pray, Father, as Satan has put all of the traps, all of the hardships, all of the temptations around us, Lord, help us to call on you with all of our heart. Father, we already know that your word says that you'll guide us step by step so that we are never out of your will. This we pray, Lord, because we need your strength and your help. Friends, would you continue? Hi, I'm Pastor Gary Ladd. It's our hope and our prayer that God's Word has touched your heart today. Perhaps you'd like to ask God for His help in your life right now. Did you know that you can call on God's Holy Spirit to help you through prayer right now, right where you are? If you pray sincerely in faith, the Heavenly Father will hear your prayer. He'll hear your prayer of confession, of forgiveness, and for comfort. If you already know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you know that God wants you to be closer to Him, to draw you in closer. Would you pray right now and ask God to forgive you of your sin and to draw you in close to him to that personal love relationship that God wants you to have? Did you know that God's word tells us in 1 John 1, 9 that if you'll confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart or into your life, dear friend, please do that today. He wants to have a personal love relationship with you. He wants to be your Lord and your Savior. If God's Holy Spirit is pulling on your heart right now, this is how you can receive Him as your Lord and Savior today. It's really a simple, a very simple process of faith called admit, believe, and confess. Admit that you're a sinner and that you need God's help. Believe that Jesus Christ is God's son, that he came to this earth, that he lived his perfect life, that he died on the cross for your sin, and that he rose again so that he might prepare a place for you in heaven. 
And then the last thing that you need to do is confess. Confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord, the boss of your life, and that he is your Savior. If you'd like to do that right now, you can pray a very simple prayer and invite him into your life. If you would, just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. I acknowledge that my sins have separated me from you. Please forgive me of those sins, Lord. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me, to die in my place. And thank you, Father, that he rose again to be my Lord and my Savior. I now ask you to rescue me from my sin. And I place my faith in you alone for forgiveness and for eternal life. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, and you prayed that prayer in faith, believing, then dear friend, you've begun your spiritual walk with God through Jesus Christ. Please let us know about this, won't you? This is just the beginning, and we'd like to pray with you and for you and to help you to start your process of growing with Jesus Christ. Please contact the church offices of Grace Point at the email that you see right there on your screen. If you'd like to access other sermons or helps, or if you'd like to find out more about Grace Point Ministries, service times, Bible studies, youth or children's activities, please look us up at the website on your screen right now, gpf.church. Thank you for joining us for our worship broadcast today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace.